What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Israel Adesanya sends a warning to Drakus Duplessis. At UFC 305, Israel Adesanya will look to return to action and reclaim the middleweight title in Perth after losing the belt to Sean Strickland last year at UFC 293. Leading up to the long-awaited grudge match between Adesanya and Drakus Duplessis, the last stylebender sent a warning to the champion while speaking in an interview on The Rock. As he explained, he isn't just looking to retake his place atop the division and become the first three-time middleweight champion. He's looking to take Duplessis' head off. And again, you said I'm looking to be the third, you know, first three-time UFC middleweight champion. I'm not looking to do that. I'm looking to take his head off. That's yeah. all I'm looking to do. I'm going after him. And this is not wolf tickets. I I, I, I feel different. So I just want to go in there and I, I have nothing to lose. So that, that keeps me free. That keeps me free. I've already been... The champion once i've done it twice i'll do it a third time cool cool story bro but yeah with fight night rapidly approaching the mma community seems incredibly divided on who they think gets the job done with adesanya sitting as a narrow negative 146 favorite and duplessis sitting as a slight underdog with plus 114 odds on fan duel in addition, ahead of the fight, a rumor has been circulating suggesting that if Adesanya emerges victorious, a trilogy fight between he and Alex Pereira could be inevitable after the UFC booked Magomed Ankalaev a fight at UFC 308 rather than a title fight. However, so far, the rumors are unconfirmed and it's unclear if Adesanya will move up and wait in pursuit of a trilogy fight against Pereira. Next up, let's take a look at Robert Whittaker talks about Hamzat Chimaev fight. Heading into UFC 305, it appeared as though there was a logjam of contenders at 185 pounds, with both Sean Strickland and Robert Whittaker sitting on the cusp of a crack at the title. While Strickland has made it clear that he has no intentions of fighting anyone besides the middleweight champion in the wake of his win over Paulo Costa, Whittaker was just booked to fight Hamzat Chimaev at UFC 308 in a high-stakes bout. Following the announcement, Whittaker spoke on his MMA Arcade podcast to discuss the bout and why he decided to accept the fight rather than waiting to see how things play out between Israel Adesanya and Drakus Duplessis on August 17th. Chimaev is a hard fight. He's obviously a big draw, especially over there in Abu Dhabi. So he, he's a draw. And I think the UFC story-wise wants to see Chimaev get, you know, a shot at the champion or whatever. They want to see Chimaev mm. like up the top of the ladder. They want to see him in that picture. But I love disrupting their plans. I love derailing <laughs> their stories. That's why I took the fight. You know, I asked for the fight. I didn't, it wasn't really? to me. I asked for the fight. Straight after the last fight, I was like, I saw that there was an Abu Dhabi card in October. I'm calm line fits, fits perfectly. And I was like, I'll fight Chimaev again. Yeah. Let's do it again. Just make sure he turns up. I look forward to hard fights. I look forward to these fights. And I know that if I beat Chimaev, there is nothing in my way to get in my belt back. With Whitaker booked to fight Chimaev and Strickland uninterested in serving as the backup fighter at UFC 305, it's unclear who the promotion will have weigh in as the backup fighter in case either of the two main event fighters are forced out of the bout on short notice. Next up, let's take a look at Sean O'Malley reveals plans after next fight. Over the weekend, Umar Nurmagomedov picked up the biggest win of his career, defeating Corey Sanhagen to earn his sixth straight win inside the octagon. After the win in Abu Dhabi, Nurmagomedov was officially named as the bantamweight number one contender by Dana White, setting the streaking contender up for a fight with the winner of the upcoming omalley Davishvili fight. The way Sugar Sean O'Malley sees things, however, after his fight with Mirab Davishvili at UFC 306, he has a number of options on his plate. As a result, the champion isn't sold on the idea of a bout between him and Nurmagomedov for his next fight. During a recent episode of his Timbo Sugar Show, O'Malley weighed in on the bantamweight title picture and his future. It, it makes it, It's an interesting match, but O'Malley versus Nurmagomedov, one way I could become you know, bigger than Connor, like I've claimed to have wanted to be, is, is do what he couldn't do. Beat a Nurmagomedov, take away the O, and uh, do what Connor. He's already mad at me, jealous. But this would, that would really sting him. So. Did Dana say that's what's ne what would be next? Did no, I, I haven't really talked to him. I've, uh, Figgy beat Cheeto on the same card. Figgy called me out. Um, that could be next. It, it, I don't know. Max versus Ely is coming up. I you know would love an opportunity to go up to 45. As O'Malley went on to explain, a fight between Nurmagomedov and Davison Figueredo could make sense in the meantime if he decides to move up and wait for his next bout. However, 
With White naming Nurmagomedov the number one contender, the promotion may not be interested in seeing O'Malley move up in weight right now. Up next, Dana White gets called out for being a hypocrite. While Dana White has been an outspoken critic of boxers padding their records rather than fighting the best of the best, White has continued to talk up a heavyweight title fight between John Jones and Stipe Miocic rather than a title unification bout between Jones and Tom Aspinall, going so far as to say that Aspinall doesn't deserve anything as the interim champ. Given that White has continued to prioritize the quote-unquote legacy fight between Jones and Miocic, despite the fact that it'll hold up the division and the fact that both fighters might retire after their fight, Ben Askren feels as though White has become a hypocrite. Yeah, you know what? I almost feel like maybe John's got some dirt on Dana or something because Dana generally would not put up with this type of behavior. He would say, and what this is what the UFC has been founded on, where boxing was and is, we want the best guys to fight. We want to see who the actual best guy is. We don't want to, you know, waste time with shenanigans. We don't want, you know, to pad records to go to 40 and all. We don't do that. That's what boxing does. In the UFC, we put the best guys in there and we see who wins. As White explained after Aspinall's recent victory over Curtis Blades at UFC 304, he would be shocked if Jones decided to retire after his fight with Stipe Miocic rather than test himself against Aspinall before riding off into the sunset. While nothing has been announced by the UFC yet, the expectation is that Jones and Miocic will collide at UFC 309 at Madison Square Garden in November. Next, let's take a look at UFC fight updates. Heading into this weekend's Tibura vs Spivak 2 card at the Apex, let's take a look at today's UFC fight updates, starting with a new addition to the UFC Vegas 99 card on October 19th, with Jessica Penny set to fight Elise Reed. Penny broke the news on her podcast, revealing that she will be back in action after a year and a half away from the Octagon, following a loss to Tabitha Ricci back in March of 2023, which put her on a two-fight skid. On the flip side, Reed will be looking to return from a year-long hiatus of her own that most recently saw her lose to Lupita Godinez back in September. In addition, a fight between Chris Weidman and Eric Anders has been added to the UFC 309 card on November 16th, with Weidman looking to build on a controversial victory over Bruno Silva back in March that saw the former champion repeatedly eye-poke his opponent throughout the fight and the finishing sequence. On the flip side, Anders will be looking to build on a March victory over Jamie Pickett, which saw him return to the win column after a loss to Mark andre Barrio last summer. Next, let's take a look at Daniel Cormier opposes the new 12-6 elbow rule. Recently, the Association of Boxing Commissions and Combative Sports, also known as the ABC, decided to change the unified rules of MMA to allow 12-6 elbows. While many, including Joe Rogan, believe that the change was long overdue, Daniel Cormier feels as though the legalization of 12-6 elbows sets a dangerous precedent in MMA. On a recent episode of Funky and the Champ, Cormier spoke about the situation, saying that he fears one rule could open the door to further rule changes that could set MMA back. I, I don't uh, care as much about 12-6 elbows, but I think the moment we start opening those rules Docker's again, kicks, I agree. Thumbs down. then it, it's going to be more and more and more. And then ultimately, we'll get back to soccer kicks. Well, because I, now, I do, you, like... do you, under, you do know that now, hands down, starting in November, is not that's grounded great. anymore. That's perfect. It, it is perfect. But again, that's one that's move clarity. back if towards that. that clarity, so they got to put a knee down. Then there'll be something else that moves closer to that. And then that's, that's just you my biggest You should get the knee down to opponent. While 12 to 6 elbows are now legal techniques, so far there's been no official talk of soccer kicks and knees to the head of grounded opponents being legalized, despite fighters like Demetrius Johnson wanting grounded knees to be made legal across the board. Next up, let's take a look at Francis Ngannou reveals sad news. Following Francis Ngannou's loss to Anthony Joshua in March, the former UFC champion tragically lost his 15-month-old son Kobe in April. At the time, the combat sports community was quick to throw their support behind Ngannou and his family during their difficult time. However, some couldn't help but wonder whether or not he would ever return to competition. As it turns out, Ngannou wasn't sure that he would ever compete again either. During a recent interview with Sky Sports Boxing, the Predator revealed that he was close to retiring after the death of his son, but decided to instead fight in his son's memory. Since I lost my son, and then, uh, you know, for the most, most uh, for some time, I felt like I didn't even have to do this, or uh, questioning about if I should do it or fight again or something. 
but I, I know that my son had like something good out, uh, in his memory and I want to do something good on his memory, you know, to use this, not to be the reason for me. This week, the PFL announced that Nganu would be returning to action on October 19th at the PFL's Battle of the Giants event, where he will compete against Hanan Fajeda, who defeated Ryan Bader earlier this year at the PFL Bellator crossover card. The event will also notably feature WMMA legend Chris Cyborg, who will be competing against two-time PFL champion Larissa Pacheco. Dana White blames ESPN for low pay-per-view numbers due to piracy. The UFC and ESPN had a meeting recently to discuss pay-per-view buys, and in conclusion, the UFC feels that ESPN raised the prices too high, leading to more illegal streams. Here's what TKO president Mark Shapiro had to say. Look, ESPN and Disney were very aggressive, if you will, on pricing the pay-per-view. I mean, and they have full control over that. I mean, we have input, but they have control given what they're, they're paying us for those rights. Over the period of our partnership, as you asked, they probably went a little quicker and a little higher than we would have liked. And we voiced that to them, especially in this kind of era of piracy, where we're seeing our, our piracy numbers really jacked up. And we think that's driven by them pricing it too high. So they were very receptive to that feedback. We had a meeting in Las Vegas a few months ago with Jimmy Pitaro and, and Dana. And they took the price down, if you will, in terms of offering a new marketing promotion, where if you buy by a certain date well in advance of the of the numbered fights, you were going to get a discount. And then the price, of course, increases once you pass that date. And they're seeing good success with that. So top comments, Poirier versus Sarukian, the fight no one asked for. They used us and we were trying to take advantage of them. The Bilal delusion is only growing. Bro calling out Shavkat makes me think Bilal doesn't want to keep his belt. Poirier versus Sarukian gonna be interesting, especially after Dustin's last performance with Makachev. 